Hi, my name is Nevada Nelson, and this is Just as Sane as I Am, Nellie Bly's expose of Blackwell's Asylum. Who am I? Honorable Judge Gildersleeve and Jury. My name is Elizabeth Cochran, but you may know me better by my pen name, Nellie Bly. I'm 23 years old, and I've just arrived here in New York from my home state of Pennsylvania. I've been a journalist my whole professional life, and when I arrived in New York, I knew I wanted to work with the renowned newspaper, The World. They were just my type. Joseph Pulitzer reformed the dying paper into the most successful in the country, using a combination of grisly true stories and the latest gossip and scandals. The best reporters worked for Pulitzer, and I knew that I was one of them. And so, by reporting on reporting itself and sending this article back to my home company of the Pittsburgh Dispatch, I was put into direct contact with a Mr. John Cockerell of the world. I was given a job with the paper, proven that I could complete one not-so-simple assignment. Get myself committed to the Women's Lunatic Asylum on Blackwell's Island. Whether this was Cockerell's idea or an assignment directly from Joseph Pulitzer himself, I don't know. But they gave me this job to get rid of me. They didn't think that I could do it. But I said I could, and I would. And I did. And this is why I am here, relaying my reports today to you, Honorable Judge and Jury. I'm sure you've seen my story in the paper, but I'm here to set the record straight and answer any questions you may have regarding the care of the poor unfortunates on Blackwell's Island. Providing that you are ready, I shall jump right into my story. I had no idea what it was I was walking into. Save the rumors I had heard, all that I knew were that the occurrences of the asylum were hidden by bolts and bars. And for the rumors, oh, they were horrible. But I didn't believe them, that a place that was to benefit the most unfortunate of God's creatures could be under such mismanagement. I deemed it impossible. Oh, how wrong I was. Now, once I'd come up with a plan to get myself committed to Blackwell's asylum under the name of Nellie Brown, Carrying out this plan wasn't very difficult. After spending some time in a poorhouse and Bellevue Hospital, I had finally reached my goal. I was there. Blackwell's Island. Oh, the lawns were beautiful. Truly, the horrible rumors couldn't be true. The attendants led me ashore where an ambulance was waiting. And they shoved me inside like a piece of luggage. Can you believe how roughly everyone would treat me? And the eyes of my companions were so filled with fear. I really had no way to know the truth of the tales until I was th within the asylum. Once I had reached the asylum, I realized that I would have to resume the role of a reporter to get my job done as well as I could. I would still be Nellie Brown, still an unfortunate young woman, young woman with nothing to my name, but no longer did I have to feign insanity. I would act as I did when I was free. Now, one of the lovely women who traveled to Blackwell's with me was Mrs. Louise Shans. She was a German woman who spoke no English at all, and so she was confined to the asylum without even knowing the language in which she would have pled her case. She had no way to prove her sanity, and no way to know where she was stuck for possibly the rest of her life. Who would not rather be a murderer and take the chance at life than be declared insane with no chance of escape? I was left to last to see Dr. Kinnear, who would assess my sanity. I had very little hope in his being fair, and so I continued to act as normal as I could without revealing my identity. He asked me my home, my age. The rest of his questions he directed at the nurse. His job was to assess me and my mental state. And who did he pay attention to? Not me, I can tell you that. I was then ushered out into the hall. One of the other patients kindly explained to me that this was a call to supper. The dining hall was frigid, and the, many of the patients were blue with cold. The benches were bare and uninviting, yet we all sat down, receiving a slap to the ears we were anything but straight-backed. I cringed at the sight of the food that was laid along the table. Bowls filled with a pinkish liquid which the patients called tea. Pieces of underbaked bread with nearly rancid butter, and small dishes of five prunes. Upon trying these, I nearly gagged and 
ended up giving my share to some of the hungrier patients. Next were the baths. When I protested, the nurses threatened to use force that wouldn't be very gentle. And so I complied. A crazy, chattering woman stood next to me, and the water was ice cold as she scrubbed at me with a rough rag and the same soap used on my body, my face, even my hair. And then, without warning, I got three buckets of the same cold water over my head, into my eyes, my ears. And they dragged me out of the tub, shivering, and dried me with the same towel I'd seen used on patients with sickness and sores evident on their bodies. And they shoved me into a garment that would have been cold in the late spring, let alone now in the autumn chill. After this first night, I didn't believe that anything would get better for me or any of the other patients. I was right. The next morning, there was a spider in my bread, so I did not eat it. Soon I was subject to my first walk. We were led outside in lines and made to march around in the cold for hours. I noted with horror a group of women bound together by chains. Upon further investigation, I found that these were supposedly the most dangerous and violent women on the island. I planned to get myself grouped within the, with them, but by this time I was scared for my own safety in the higher security buildings. Not from the other patients, but the staff that worked with them. The nice young superintendent, Dr. Dent, came round at dinner that night. I asked some of the patients why they did not confide in him what the nurse subjected them to, and they replied that they would receive beatings if they did. My next nine days in the asylum were nothing but the same. And so, after ten days in a madhouse, I was taken off the island. I began my quest to the asylum on September 22nd, and left the island on October 4th. And it is now, just under three weeks later, that I am here with you, by order of Joseph Pulitzer himself. Improvements? Of course, Your Honor. I've been thinking about what I would do to improve the system nearly non-stop since I've left the island. I'm glad that you've asked for my input. First off, I would see that there's more money put into the care of the poor unfortunates throughout New York, not just on Blackwell's Island. I would see that there are kind, caring physicians appointed to watch over the staff that care for the patients, and that the patients and staff are eating the same food therefore incentivizing a better diet for the patients. I would see that there are more accommodations built and that the limit of patients per building are adhered to. The locks on the door shall be changed to ones that can be opened quickly and at once in case of a fire. Above all else, I wish for the barrier of bolts and bars between the public and the asylums to be broken. There shall be a certain level of transparency regarding the treatment of the poor unfortunates. These people need all the help they can get, and they need it in a place that will not drive them further into the pit of insanity. These patients are human, just like you and I, and they deserve to be treated as such. If we can break the secrecy that shrouds the asylums, we will be one step closer to the humane helpful treatment of the patients on Blackwell's Island and everywhere else. I also wish that the barrier of unfair trial is broken. Doctors shall listen to their patients' pleas and consider them. Just because these patients were sent to an asylum does not mean that they belong there. Once these barriers are broken, I truly believe that those who I deem to be just as sane as I am will get the justice that they deserve. Thank you, Your Honor.